Hi, I'm Allie with PotomacBeads.com, and today I want to go over with you how to use some right angle weave techniques as well as basic beading techniques and netting to make these fun double Dutch earrings, which I am also wearing here. This is a design from Anna, which is going to utilize six by nine millimeter drops as well as some seed beads. If you need a full list of the materials, you can watch to the end of the video when I go over the exact counts that you need. Also, if you need to purchase any of the materials for these fun double Dutch, you can go below the video to the little description and we'll put links in there to purchase from us at potomacbeads.com and potomacbeads.com. EU. So if you want to get ready to create the double dutch earrings, grab some 6 by 9 millimeter drops and some 11 and 8 OC beads. Grab a couple 15s, some pad posts so we can make it there on the post and join in. So to begin our double dutch earrings, we're going to be starting with the bottom piece and then working our way up as we connect them. So we'll start out with the bottom little windmill and then we'll work our way up to the top windmill. And as we start at the bottom here, we are going to be using our 11 O's in our two colors, our 15 O's and then our 8 O seed bead. It's going to begin very simply by putting a stop bead onto the project. I have a silver stop bead here. That's not included in the project and I'm just going to leave about an inch left on the tail because I don't need to actually do anything with this tail. I'm just going to use it to tie a knot. From here, we're going to begin the pattern of our drops and these are the six by nine millimeter drops with an 80 seed bead in between each one. So I picked up an 80 first, then my three drops with the 80s in between. I'm going to push that down towards that stop bead. And we're going to bring it around in a circle by going back through the first eight, the first drop, the second eight, and the second drop. And then we'll bring it out. Actually, go ahead and go through the third eight because we want to come out one of the eight O's. That brings it around in a circle and just kind of push that stop bead for now to one of the sides, either the back or the front. Try not to let it hang out um, along the sides between the drops. From here, we're going to begin doing our little connection points of our windmill and getting that design. We're going to begin by going towards the front and working towards the back. My front color of my fifth, of my 11 O's is going to be that transparent Montana blue. Add two onto your needle coming out of an 8 and go back through the 8 seed bead. Those two beads are just going to kind of hang out there. I want to push them towards the center of the project. Next, I'm going to add three of my matte antique rows in the 11s. Just like we did with the blue, I'm going to go through that 8 0 in that semi glazed blue turquoise. And I'm going to make those go next in line. We're going to do one more third pass through, adding two more of my blue, going through that 8 0 C bead again. And I want it to be the order sitting in line here of the blue, so two 11s, then my three 11s, and then my two 11s. So that's the pattern that I want to go through. Once you do that but on one of the 8 O's, you're going to sew over through a drop and on to the next 8 0. You need to make sure that your needle is coming out of the 8 0 before you add your progression of two 11s in the blue color. And you could do these all the same color too if you wanted to. And your three. 11s, go next in line, and then back to two in the blue color. And make sure that those go behind that antique rose color, because you want again that rotation of two, then three, then two. Once you do that twice on one more time to do it the third time. You can also do these earrings that um, you can catch up with us as we do the top one that you can have it just as one rather than doing the double. You can just do a single little windmill and instead of the double dutch it would be the single dutch. We're going to add three more 11s as I come around in the circle and then two more of my 11s to the back. So my two 11s here and I'm going to make sure as I go around that they sit in order. So if they kind of pop in the middle there, you just want to take your fingers and move that thread towards the back. Make sure that the thread also is not sitting intersecting any of the other seed beads that are already there. This is going to be the basis for the whole design. Now what we're going to do is close up the front of the design to get our little triangle and then we'll flip over in the back 
and close up the back of the design. In her design, Anna did not add a 15 0 in between. I decided just to change it up a little bit so you could see the variance and added a 15 0 C bead between the 11 0 C beads in that transparent Montana. To connect the beads at the front and bring them towards the front, coming out of the 8 0, I'm going to sew through the first two of my blue beads that sit towards the front. Then I'm going to go around, sew through the next two blue beads that sit towards the front. Give a nice tight yank. And then I'm going to catch on to the next two blues. So all together, you're going to catch on to all those six blues that sit to the front of the design and sew through and connect all of those blue beads around in a circle. Give a nice tight yank and you can see that pulls them in. Here's where Anna just left them be and did one more kind of loop around. I'm going to add in a 15-0 now between each of those twos just to hide a little bit of that thread. So I add a 15, sew through my next two groups of my blue, add a 15, sew through the next two groups of the blue. The reason I did not add the 15 in the first time I went around is because I want it to be more triangular. And if I added the 15s the first time around, it would make it more rounded rather than triangular. So now that I have that front side here completed, now I'm going to jump and do the back side of the project. You're going to sew down the 80 seed bead that you have coming out, that you're coming out of with the blue beads. That way you don't see any extra thread. And we're literally going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. So you're going to grab your two blues that are right next to the 80 that's coming out, kind of push them to the back. Next grouping of two blues. Push that stop bead out of the way. We'll get rid of that in a second. Going around in a circle. And remember, we're not adding the 15s till we already go around once. So that way it gets more of a triangular rather than a rounded look. And then back through the first two. So very simple. And then again, I'm just gonna pop in that gold color to hide my thread and to give that nice triangular look. I'm going around here. And I get my last bead in. And then that's going to finish up my front and my back of this first portion of the double dutch. What I am going to do now is get rid of my starter thread by tying it onto the thread that I'm currently using. I'm going to go through, skipping over the 15, I'm going to go through the next blue in line. And I'm skipping the 15 so that way it stays um, in that triangular shape and doesn't round it out. And then I'm simply going to take off the stop bead, kind of pulling it off, and I'm going to get rid of that thread end by tying these two threads together. I'll then be able to, and you want to try as much as possible to kind of hide that knot. I'm just going to try two knots or tie two knots there. And then if you want to, you can take your thread zap or your thread burner, burn it down a little bit, but then I don't do the final burn until the very, very end. From here, I'm going to go down through my 8 0 that sits right below those beads and bring the needle out. Get the tail out here. And then, with your needle coming out of the 8 0 seed bead, we are going to get ready to do our connection and start our second portion of our double dutch, which is going to be actually a right angle weave that we connect onto. Again, I'll be adding 15s in between, and I kept hers open with the 8 O's going between the 11s rather than adding some 15s in. Coming out the 8 O seed bead, I'm going to take my needle and thread up through my antique rose color of my 11s coming out through two beads. Then we're going to do it a little bit of right angle weave, adding in 180, 111, and 180, and going back through that mauve 11 in a circular form to get our little right angle unit. Just like I did with the kind of decorating here of the 15s, now I'm going to add a 15 0 between each of these seed beads. 
Again, I'm not adding it at the start because I want it to sit kind of at that nice sharp angle. So I'm adding a 15 and sewing back through that entire little right angle unit that I just created. So I added a 15 the whole way around and then sewed through each of my beads again. Give a nice tight pull, that way you don't see any extra thread showing. From here, you're gonna sew up through the next 8 -0 and the next 11 -0, which is gonna be that rose mauve color. Now we're gonna start our next of our little pinwheels here, our next of our drops. Again, it's gonna use three more drops, so I have my three drops ready to go. And when you're looking at your drops too, if you are going with this Rosaline um, dark travertine color, uh, I went through, I'm gonna go through here and pick out some of the ones with the best coating because I really like the coating. So some of the ones that have the darkest coating, those are gonna be the ones that I wanna use. And I have a full strand so I can do that. Coming out then the end here, to add, what we are going to do is add 111, another eight, and one more 11. We're then gonna take it back through, just like we did that roundedness, we're gonna take it back through the 11. And that creates our little triangle that's gonna sit at the top of the next little pinwheel section. Come down then the 11 and the eight, spinning around. So it's almost like you're adding a right angle weave unit, adding the 11, 8, 11, sewing back through and making sure that your thread is exiting the eight. Now I'll go through and put on my last of my drops. So I have on my one drop and then I need two more eight O's to add in between those drops. And then after you have those two eight O's and your three drops on, you're gonna sew back through the 8 that the thread was coming out of. And that's gonna round it out. Now we're gonna repeat what we did on the bottom step. I'm gonna go through the drop and go through the next eight in line. And I'm gonna add again my rotation of two of my 11s in my blue color. Then I'll do my three in my mauve, for that antique rose. Making sure they sit behind those first two that I just did two more of my 11s go on, back through that same 8 seed bead, making sure again that those sit behind the mauve. So on then through the next drop, through the next 8 and repeat. I'm gonna do this one here, and I'm gonna catch down and do my 8 here I need to do my blues. The purple's already, or that rose color is already there, so I'm gonna do my two to the front and then two to the back. When you do get back to the starting side and you have two to the front of the blue that you add, remember your antique rows are already there from your connection point. Flip the project over so that way you make sure that the two blue, the second set of two blue does go to the back of the project. From here, just like we did on the other side, we're gonna close up the front. I'm gonna add my thread going back through all of my blue. And then optional, you can add those 15 O's between. So in here then, I'm gonna take my 15 O's after I sewed through the blues and add the 15s between the blues. From here then, as I add those 15s between the blues, I'm going to jump over to the opposite side and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna add in the post. The way that we're gonna add in the post, if you want to do it as a post earring, is we're gonna create a little um, netting going through and adding on to the two blue seed beads. If you want to, you can also put a little loop on this around the back here and actually hang it from an ear wire, 
or make them connections so that way they actually can be done as a necklace. That's an option. But to go in and put in the actual ear wire along the back, we're doing a padded post. I'm going to go through, just like I did on the top, or in the bottom section, go through two of my blue beads after going around in the circle and adding in the gold, not going through the gold 15, just through the blues, out through the 8 then kind of reversing the, through that 8 that the blue was on top of, right down there, to the other side then, catching on the blue beads that are on the back side. Between the blue beads that are on the back side, instead of circling around and connecting them, which if you want to do this as a connection piece and then add a plain ear wire, you can do that. But if you want to do it that you have the actual padded post, you're going to add five gold 15s between each of your two, your groupings of two of your transparent Montana 11s. You're going to see that create a little arch. Add in five more. Again, go through the next two. Five more gold get added. And then we're going to pull those gold up. Kind of cleaning up my mat here. Grab two other golds that are floating around. I'm going to sew through those two blue that our original 15s were coming out of. So now you have a little bit of space here that you can connect in, and we're going to bring up basically the center sections, bringing up the middle, the third bead of each of those groups of five. We're going to bring those up. So I'm going to bring my thread and needle through the first three gold beads that I put on, hop over to my next set of my five 15s, go through that center gold bead and I'm not pulling tight yet because I don't have in my ear wire and then hop over to the next set of gold beads and back to the first so it's making a little triangle and again not pulling tight because I don't have my ear wire in there and you can see that little opening that it's creating grab your little ear wire put in that padded post in between the threads there so it's sitting right there and then you get to pull and tighten the thread. And I'm gonna sew back through all of these middle third beads one more time, which is really gonna pull all of that thread up so you get a nice seamless backing and it doesn't sit too far off the actual pad post so you don't have to worry about it sitting off and out of the ear. So go ahead and add one more passive thread through all of those center 15s and just through those center 15s. So you're going through the third of all of them. All you have to do then is just tie off the thread and that's going to actually finish up the backing and how that attaches onto your ear and how you can wear it onto the ear. So again, if you want to, you can do that middle section or you can keep it nice and simple without the 15s or even keep it just as a stud. As you burn down the threads then, you have your fun double Dutch earrings completed. And for the materials for these, you really do only need um, 24 of the 11 OC beads, which is so little in the blue color. You need uh, what are we, 18 of the mauve in the 11s, and then just those couple little 15 O's to catch in and to catch along the back. For the drops, I did use in my drops here, I used the uh, Rosaline Dark Travertine, and you're using six drops, so 12 total in each earring. Anna did use the khaki in hers, that um, nice swirled color as well. For the 11 OC beads, we both use the Miyuki brand, and I have the Montana Blue in the transparent, and then the matte antique. Again, you just need a couple of each of those. For the 8 O's along the connection, if you want to go kind of bright, Anna used the um, Aztec gold color there, and I used a Toho seed bead in the semi-glazed blue transparent turquoise just to drop in there. The 15 O that I used was just the galvanized gold, and then you can use a gold or silver or stainless steel pad post with a 6, -0, uh, with a six millimeter backing. I used 0 .006 white wildfire thread with her colors, and I used the green wildfire thread. And really about four feet of thread will get you the whole earrings uh, completed as you're working with that. Always nice also to have a little thread zap or a thread burner 
to use while you're making these double dutch earrings. Hopefully you learned a little bit about that right angle weave in the middle, kind of how to do this nice floral kind of pattern that's decorating along the sides, and then really importantly how to attach that pad post if you do want to have a post earring rather than one that has an actual ear wire on it. Again, if you do want to do an ear wire, simply make the ear wire connect to one of those groupings of five gold seed beads along the back that you add in. Again, if you need any of the materials, we're happy to send them to you from potomacbeads.com or potomacbeads.eu. I'll put links down in the bottom of the description of this video to purchase some of these products from us um, if you do want to get those supplies. As always, you can always uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel, give a little thumbs up or give us a comment if you like the video, um, ask some questions there, and you can make that area interactive as well. Also, you can check us out on Facebook and join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Show off what you're working on, get suggestions, offer help, and really become part of the amazing community um, that we are honored to have uh, helped create. So thanks so much for watching and have fun making Anna's double dutch earrings.